Overwatch has problems. Like a lot of problems. But today, we're tackling the relatively unimportant and talking about some of the bewildering UI decisions that plague one of the clunkiest menus I've had the displeasure of regularly using. When boiled down into its key components, a main menu always consists of some variation of a play button. Perhaps an index or a codex, an inventory or character customization screen, a player profile, oh, and of course, an options menu. What's that definitely real human being off to the side of my microphone? There's no options menu in the main menu? Huh? Sorry about that, folks. It seems like on the main menu of Overwatch, there is no settings menu. There is no options menu. The menu that every single player is going to want upon booting the game for the first time isn't on the main menu. Where is it? Well, here we encounter baffling decision number two. So, the options menu isn't in the main menu, you have to press escape to find the secondary menu main menu, where you'll find things not on the main main menu, such as options, patch notes, and credits. Three items bizarrely tucked away in this separate escape menu. I tried to wrap my head around why you can even press escape whilst in the main menu, as this typically is just an exit game shortcut. I thought, from a coding perspective, it makes sense. Whilst in-game, you need an escape menu to access these aforementioned things, so why disable this in the menu outside of gameplay? Just leave it available as an option. So, let's test that theory. Hop into a game. Hit escape, and nope, that's a different menu. The only difference being that patch notes are missing, and I can see some logic for that. But that's besides the point. Hi, editing Barra here. We'll, we'll get to what's besides the point in a second, but can we just take a small moment to appreciate as well the fact that on the main menu it goes social career profile challenges, but on the other two menus it goes social challenges career profile. Okay. Anyway, back to you, me. But that's besides the point. The effort has been taken to make these into two different menus, meaning Overwatch, on purpose, has three distinct main menus, depending on where in the UI you are. Baffling. Perhaps this seems to you like a very minor problem, or not even one at all, but I assure you it's only dark tidings for worse things to come, and I'm still gonna take the time to fix this. And it would be splendidly simple to do so. If Blizzard really don't trust people with access to the patch notes and credits in-game, then pop them on the main menu. This frees us up to just completely remove the ability to access this secondary menu main menu whilst on the real main menu, whilst keeping the in-game escape menu nice and sensible. There's something I desperately want to add to the in-game escape menu, but we're gonna pop a pin in this here, and we're gonna come back to it when it's more relevant later in the video. One thing I'm keen to avoid is cluttering a page just in the name of tidying it up. So when it comes to the changes we've made on the main menu, because we've added a couple of buttons, I've opted to take away the progression button. I know it's a new feature, and they're very proud of their widow baby, but progression is kind of a redundant menu item. It's merely one click away, from the career profile, and it's not exactly a high traffic menu. You see your progression information at the end of every match, so I'm never going to this page between matches. I can count the amount of times I've been to the progression page on one hand, probably if I had most of my fingers missing. Oh, uh, I'm a VTuber by the way. I'm sorry. I know it's disappointing to learn, isn't it? And yes, I've seen H Bomber Guy's big video essay. I liked his wallpaper background, and I've stolen it. But it looks pretty, right? It looks good. It's like rose themed. It's like me. Let's move on. Anyway, where were we? Oh, that's right. I was complaining about. What is going on, Blizzard? When a match of Overwatch 2 ends, you are shown three things the play of the game which is also incredibly broken and could easily have a video essay of its own. That was, that was, a, that was a good one. I, I can see why that was play of the game. Your hero progression medals, which I personally couldn't give a monkeys about, and I suspect a good chunk of the player base feels the same way, followed by your battle pass progress, which, though I am interested in my battle pass level, I don't need to watch it crawl up every match, especially when I haven't leveled up that game. Why am I making such a point of this? I mean, it's like 15 to 20 seconds at the end of your match. Well, because despite it being a very minor inconvenience, 
they do occur at the end of every match. And after hundreds or even thousands of matches, you start to get a little sick of seeing these pages that you don't really care about. So, naturally, you hit escape to skip them. But pressing escape does not skip this menu. Not only does it not skip this menu, it resets it. It replays all of the animations from the start forever. If you keep hitting escape, it will keep looping the animations. You end up trapped in this bizarre hell of watching yourself unlock the same uninteresting weapon charm over and over and over and over and over again. If I may repeat myself from earlier, baffling. Please, either let these pop-ups be skippable, or at least fix the following issue. Because there's more to this silly little frustration. Let's not forget a fun detail of the Battle Pass recap specifically. It ticks up at the end of the match with your XP, you level up, you get a little victory tune in the notification that you've unlocked something. Great. Head on over to the hero customization and equip your fancy new highlight intro. Uh, just kidding, it's locked. You don't own that yet. Get your ass back to the main menu, into the battle pass, and rewatch the exact same XP and unlock animations again. Now you really, for real, own it. <clears throat> Baffling. To end out this end of match section, this rarer but major irritant doesn't only apply to the end of games, but at the start of them too. If I'm in my options menu, perhaps changing a reticle, changing some hero settings, maybe I'm just having a little look around. For the love of god, stop forcing it closed when anything happens. I'm doing something, Blizzard. I don't need to see the Dorado loading screen for the 700th time. I know what it looks like. I've played a lot of Overwatch. <clears throat> that got a little silly. Let's analyze some really horrendous UI layouts. What we've covered so far has been relatively unimportant and a little bit goofy. But here begins the descent into some of the worst UI design decisions I've ever seen. First of all, as a slight aside, let's return to default public profiles. I know this isn't strictly a UI complaint, but there's a dozen different reasons to make them public that aren't relevant to this video. But once we've done so, on said profiles, there needs to be a default view. And there technically is, but it's a bizarre choice. If the player in question has played competitive this season, you see their stats for the current competitive season broken down by time play. But if they have not, you see their lifetime stats broken down by hero mastery. It's not only strange to have this discrepancy, but it's also backwards. Hero Mastery is the new system. It doesn't correlate with lifetime stats, only recent stats. My head hurts with how some of these things were decided. This seems simple to me. Why are you on a person's profile? Well, it's to gauge what they typically play. To get that information at a glance, you want this filter set to all modes and this filter set to time played. This gives you a very quick overview of what heroes the person is proficient with. And you can much more easily identify this shit and leave the lobby. Let's have an explore of the rest of the career profile. We've got this original statistics page that predates the new progression system. Uh, oh, do you see a problem already? I do. The UI has two main sections, the scrolling stats and this summary. The summary of the first six stats in the list? This is worthless and taking up most of the real estate on screen. If we really believe this information is valuable enough to highlight, that's easy enough to do without any data duplication. I know, look at all this lovely blank space. I wonder if we'll be coming back to that in a moment. It's free real estate. Trekking forward for now, we see the new progression screen, specifically the Heroes tab. Do you notice anything similar? This is a fancier reskin of the existing stats page, but with less information in place of some little badges. Because of the way the layout has been rejumbled, it might not be immediately clear. But if I simplify what we're looking at here, it is absolutely crystal what they've done. Bear with me a moment. On the original stats page, there is a stat block with the bulk of data. We'll color that red. There's a highlight of some key stats. We'll color that blue. The hero selector can be yellow, and finally the filters will grace with green. Once all of the background noise has been phased out, you can see the way the information is displayed on this page quite nicely. 
will zip through the same exercise for the new progression page. As blue for the stat highlights, yellow for the hero selector, and green for the filters. Blur out the background again for clarity. And now, let's imagine we're the employee who's been tasked with spicing up a seven-year-old menu and get to work. Alright, and we'll just uh, fucking get rid of this. We don't need that. Oh, I'll make this bigger. Stick this over here. Uh, plop that there. Break this one in two. Yeah, you're looking good, buddy. No, really, that that's it. It's identical to the Statistics 1.0 page, but they removed the stat block with all the information in it. But, but it's a stats page. I don't get it. And finally, we have the showcase page for the progression system, with very pretty looking little summaries of your main heroes and game modes. It is cute, but effectively what we have in the career profile is Statistics 1.0 and Statistics 2.0. It's silly and a headache to look at. Let's combine them. We've already removed the doubled up stat highlights and we can replace those with the medals from the new progression system. There's still a little information overlap here for the simpler stats such as time played and damage dealt, but it's mostly non-duplicative and a huge improvement on before. This also provides a link between the two systems and doesn't make progression feel entirely separate from your lifetime stats, despite its late addition to the game. Then, I think the new scrolling hero selector is nicer than the old pop-out hero menu, so let's replace that too. And as simple as that, we've combined two menus into one. No information has been lost, really highlighting how padded out both of these pages were. The only thing we're losing out on so far is the pretty showcase screen, but I've got the perfect place for it. And just like that, we've decluttered the menu bar by an entire tab. Before we finish up on statistics, I think it's worth addressing that it's silly for all modes to be the default stat option when it includes custom games. Let's add a new non-custom filter that includes all quick play and competitive modes and make that the default view for any stat menu. Because I definitely didn't get 200 eliminations on Genji in a real game. As we pat ourselves on the back for merging the statistics and progression menus, tidying up the overview and fixing the main menu, let's move along to... And here is where we find one of the biggest insults to user interface design I have ever seen. And for context, I worked in IT for the UK public sector for five years. You can't imagine the horrors of cheap, shoddy software I've dealt with. <sighs> Let's get started. The History tab. Why are you here and what do you want out of it? Well, likely you've just finished a match, probably discussing the outcome with your teammates and you want to see the scoreboard. In fact, if you just finished a match... Uh, let's go back and do something very obvious. Why has this not been here the whole time? Really? Why is this ridiculous? <clears throat> Sorry, back to the history menu. We know what we want to see, but what do we actually see when we get there? Play of the game highlights. Okay, fine, I do sometimes want to see that. However, today's top five? Really? That's how we're displaying these? Overwatch replays expire every patch, not every day. Why can't you retain more than five at a time? Why are they arbitrarily ordered by top? whatever that means, instead of by recency. This means that if you play more than five games in a day, and your latest play of the game isn't in the top five, it's just inaccessible. This is, you guessed it, baffling. Let's continue before we get a headache though, cause boy it gets worse. Next up is the game reports tab. Here you can see a chronological game history, and access to summary, scoreboard, and personal stats for each game. And along from that, we finally find the replays menu, which looks nearly identical to the game reports menu, but it has different function buttons to access and pin the replays, but with none of the aforementioned stat pages. I can understand the desire not to clutter a page with buttons, but an entire different tab just for one functionality? That's strange. But here we arrive at the reason this video exists. With the current UI layout, if you want to view your stats for the game you just played, an incredibly common thing for a player to want to do, may I add, you have to take the following path. Main menu, career profile, history, game reports, highlight the match, view game reports, and then teams. This takes six clicks. Six layers deep to find one of the most fundamental and sought after menus in the entire game pertinent to the last match you just played. Not only does it take six clicks, it's six insultingly poorly designed clicks too. 
It feels like they don't want you to get to this menu. Picture a menu bar on a website. To access the next layer, the mouse has to drift either down or across slightly, depending on the orientation of the menu. If you wanted to access a web page six layers deep, you might question the poor layout of the website as you do so, but it would look like this. Not a pretty looking website, but not a lot of effort to get where you wanted to go. Let's review the mouse movements required to drill through the menus I just described. And may I take a moment to remind everybody, this is to access the scoreboard for the match that just ended four seconds ago. Starting at the career profile, the mouse has to move from a vertical menu type over to a horizontal one to select history immediately reverting back to a vertical menu type to change submenu to game reports. Then we come over to select the game of our choice, and here's my favourite part, neither single nor double clicking opens the match. We have to select it, which unlocks this superbly superfluous button, which is of course at the south side of the screen as far away from your most recent match as it could conceivably be, only for us to still not be at our destination. We now have to migrate all the way back to the top corner of the page to get the menu we actually want. Incredible stuff. If this seems nitpicky to you, start reviewing your scoreboards after every match. I give it three games before you're sick of getting lost in this menu path. It's here in the video I worry I may have lost you, dear viewer. If you believe that my complaints are relatively irrelevant and these are not issues worth talking about, I apologise. But I do want to take a quick step back and ask the question, why do I feel this matters so much? At the opening of the video, I admitted this is a minor issue in the wake of the problems Overwatch is suffering from. But at its core, really? I don't know if it is. To me, these UI problems sitting unfixed in the game, many front and centre on the goddamn main menu, screams a lack of care from those responsible. It reflects how many of us feel about the balance team, who are in charge of whether this game survives the next few months or begins its dwindle like Overwatch 1 did. Often balance changes appear to be so ridiculously out of touch with community sentiment, so much so that the only conclusion that people can come to is the people making these changes do not play their own game. Much as whoever made some of these UI elements certainly does not use them. When it's hard to believe the people in charge of a product are not actually using it, how are we as users supposed to believe in their ability to pilot it to success? The Overwatch development team has made some high promises in recent months. Many headlines bear excellent news of upcoming changes, but everything we see in game, from prior balance attempts to sloppy hero reworks, Declining mythic quality, balance changes or lack thereof motivated by the heroes that generate the most revenue, the bizarre launch of Overwatch 2 itself, and now too, the lack of care put into maintaining the UI. All of this together makes it hard to believe that the team can pull off what's needed to save the game. And believe it or not, I don't want to be negative about Overwatch. I complain because I love the game. I love the characters and when it's at its best, it plays better than anything else on the market. But sadly, a mix of corporate bollocks, a changing development team and a few poor decisions have left the game in a difficult state. And when you're watching a project struggle like this, all of the nitpicks come out. Whether it be me and this UI video, or the entirety of Twitter ripping apart the lore, People are frustrated and concerned that a thing they love might be being driven in the wrong direction and and might not be around for much longer. Before we get back to the UI, I have to take a brief moment to appreciate there are many people working on Overwatch that continue to do an excellent job. Everyone involved in skins, map visuals, sound design, art in general, voice acting, hero concepts, and even the battle pass theming, just not so much the bundle marketing, they're all doing a stellar job. But clearly there is someone somewhere at Blizzard making decisions that means there is nobody to work on the UI. There's nobody to flesh out proper lore. I'm not even convinced there's a team of people working on balance. How uninspired some of the latest changes have been, it seems like one dude chucking stuff into ChatGPT. And it frustrates me to see, and honestly it's just cathartic to rip into this goddamn history menu. What's excellent about these fixes is we don't need a single submenu here. History should be a one-stop shop for all of your game report needs, and it could so easily be that. The main focus should be the history of games. Let's bring across the context buttons and pinning feature from the replays page, as there's no reason to separate these. As you can see, it doesn't look cluttered. 
will fill in this blank space with a shortcut to your latest highlight and a scrolling box for all of your saved highlights, you know, the ones you've actually downloaded. For access to all of your highlights, we can very simply pop a button on the matches themselves, indicating whether it's a highlight or a play of the game as well. And look at this, it's all in one place. It's a tiny bit busier than it was before, but this is streamlined as hell, and I think you'd get used to this immediately. But there's more work to do, there's a second chapter to these fixes, as not only the history menu is in shambles, but the stats page for the games themselves are equally useless. We saw it briefly earlier, but the first page you land on is a monumental waste of space, giving you little to no context on the game at all. Not to mention that usually people are checking their stats immediately post-game, they're going to remember a lot of the information provided on this page. I know if we won or lost, it just happened. I know roughly how well I did and what heroes I played. Why is this the default information? These submenus probably could be collapsed down into one as we've been trying to do so far, but I actually kind of like the per hero stats page and its layout. It's not something you always want to check out, but it does have some cool information and I think it would be a shame to ditch it just in the name of cleanliness. However, when it comes to this summary screen, we are ditching everything and making the scoreboard front and centre. And sure, we'll salvage a few of the useful tidbits of information from the summary screen and pop them atop and a bottom of the scoreboard. Do away with the horizontal menu at the top and make the hero stat page accessible by a quick scroll wheel flick or a directional arrow and we're away. There's a risk I'm getting too niche here. Not everyone dabbles in custom games, but maybe if the menus were laid out better, more people might be tempted. Personally, I have a little custom free-for-all lobby that I like to run whilst queuing, but if queue times aren't so bad that evening, it takes so long to launch the custom game that we barely get a few seconds of running around before we find a match. Here, again, the ridiculous menu path required just to open a pre-saved lobby. We're not customizing anything here. I've made the game mode in advance, and saved it. All I want to do is open it. To do so, you have to follow this path. Main menu, play menu, custom games, create lobby, settings, presets, on which screen you have to wait a weirdly long time for your presets to load. What, this just a text file with settings and why is it not saved on my computer? What, where are you getting them from? What, I don't understand. Once it loads, select your preset. Agree to overwrite your settings, despite the fact you've just opened a fresh lobby with absolutely no settings in it whatsoever, so this button is not only an extra click, it's completely and utterly redundant, and after which, instead of having the decency to take you back to the lobby, you have to press back and back again on your own. Now you can launch your lobby. This whole process could be streamlined so much. On the landing page for custom games, there's a few tabs. If we just add my presets into those tabs, you could hop in there, select a preset, and have it immediately launch your lobby. This pretty simple change cuts down a 10 step process into just four clicks. But before we do move on, remember our pin from way back in the main menu section? We're heading back for it. If you, like me, Use custom games or the training range to whittle away some time whilst you wait for queues or wait for your friends to all come online. If you need to change roles, requeue, or initiate the queue in the first place, you cannot do so without kicking your entire party back to the main menu. It would be a godsend to have access to the play menu from within those lobbies. Of course, when you're in a real game of Overwatch, such a button needs to be absent or greyed out to be in keeping with my complaints at the start of the video. But when in a custom lobby, a skirmish lobby, or the practice range, why can't we initiate a search queue without backing all the way back to the main menu, initiating the search, and then re-entering our lobby of choice? Which, as we just covered, if that lobby of choice is a custom one, that's a fucking faff. You know what? The customization menu in Overwatch is pretty good. A significant portion of this section of the script has been cut. It was dedicated to making fun of how a game dedicated to pumping out as many cosmetics as possible doesn't have any ability to automatically rotate said cosmetics, therefore incentivizing players to buy one skin they like and nothing else ever again. 
But Blizzard beat me to it and actually added in the favoriting and random from favorites feature. I mean, it was bugged for two weeks when it came out and didn't actually work, but hey, they released it. The one thing the hero gallery is sorely lacking is search. There is a filter now, but it's pretty clunky and relatively useless. The number of cosmetics is ever growing. And particularly for the voice line and weapon charm menus, it's becoming increasingly difficult to navigate and find what you're after. I'd love to see not only a search feature, but a fully fleshed out metadata search. Meaning that every item is tagged with a few relevant terms in the background, so you could not only search for the exact name of a cosmetic, but when you inevitably cannot remember its actual in-game name, you could enter a couple of qualities of the cosmetic, such as colour, theme, release date, or distinguishing features, and it'll bring up anything relevant. For example, maybe I want to find this Doomfist skin, but I'm not much of an anime guy and I don't remember what it's called. I could just go to the search and type in yellow or cape, and that would bring up the skin and any others that also share those features. For voice lines, you could just start typing the bit of the voice line you remember, and regardless of what it's officially called, you'll find it. With some exceptions. And you know what else would be handy dandy and mighty cute? if we could access our own profile customization from the hero customization menu. As after all, we, the player, are heroes as well. So, um, what's it about? What's, what's the video been about? The Overwatch UI is not great, obviously. You might have even known that before getting this far. But why care? Why the video? A bad UI is never excusable. They're an insult to end users everywhere. But particularly in the world of online gaming, a frustrating UI can be an undiscussed and perhaps even undetected catalyst in your community's toxicity. Do you notice that in some games, losing doesn't feel so bad, where in others it's rage inducing? Of course, there's a thousand factors that go into that feeling, but one nobody speaks of is where you're sent after that loss. Are you sent to a visually pleasing, well thought out menu with useful information and desirable browsing? Or is it a buggy, looping, unskippable end screen that pushes you onto an empty main menu designed only to draw your eyes to the shiny store? And lest you dare venture off elsewhere, you will find a mountain of poor design decisions high enough to make a middling in length YouTube video essay as you ascend to its dreary peak. Perhaps a dramatic way of putting it, but my conclusion is that the UI of a product is so much more than just how the user interfaces with your system. It's the final layer of polish, the paintwork, the silicon round your shower and the skirting board round your bedroom. It's the final finishing touches that bring out the beauty in something you've created. And a glorious final finish can mask poor craftsmanship or a poor product. But equally, a poor finish can squander a masterpiece. More than that though, the quality of that final layer is a testament to how the creator views their own project. An irritated and impatient creative, sick of the sight of their own project, lazily slaps on finishing touches to get it out of the door. It takes passion and love to put care into something every step of the way, especially those last few steps. So when you see a poor UI in anything you may use, don't tell yourself it's irrational to be upset by it. Yes, it's inconvenient to use a poorly designed one, but more than that, it's a window into the last stretch of the creative process. And if it's a shit UI, it's a shit view. Alright, stop the recording and piss myself, I need to pee so bad.